we present a joint representation learning and online clustering approach for unsupervised activity segmentation. This work is partially funded by NASA's Human Research Program. Do you have video data sets of semi-repetitive activities, i.e. factory line assembly, maintenance, warehouses, surgery rooms, gyms, sports, or kitchens? Insights extracted from these data sets can be used for guiding manufacturing workers, standardizing surgical procedures, and optimizing warehouse processes, amongst other applications. Unfortunately, training deep neural networks for visual activity segmentation requires costly frame-wise labels as supervisory signals. Our goal here is to train activity segmentation models in an unsupervised manner. These models allow localization of salient actions, autonomous discovery of task structure, as well as video summarization. On the left, you can see our approach in action, where the original video is at the top and the predicted segmentation along with the ground truth names of corresponding steps are visualized at the bottom. Previous approaches for unsupervised activity segmentation often treat representation learning and clustering as disjoint steps. They first learn representations guided by a pretext task and then compute the learned representations for the entire dataset. Next, the learned representations for the whole dataset are passed onto the clustering module. The downsides for such approaches are twofold. First, these approaches require learned representations for the entire data set to perform offline clustering. And second, there is no feedback from between clustering and representation learning, which leads to incoherent clusters. In contrast, we combine representation learning and clustering steps into a single joint framework. Specifically, we process a small batch of frames at a time and simultaneously learn representations and perform clustering in an online manner. This leads to improved accuracy while requiring much lesser memory. Further, it yields consistent clusters due to feedback between the representation learning and online clustering modules. For each training iteration, we first sample a small batch of frame level features and pass them through a two layer encoder network to extract the embedded features, Z. We then apply a temporal coherence loss on these embedded features. The loss encourages temporally coherent representations, i.e. neighboring video frames get mapped to nearby points in the embedding space, and temporally distant frames are pushed far away from each other. To perform online clustering, we learn a set of prototype vectors which act as cluster centroids, denoted here as C. The prototype vectors are initialized at random and learned via backpropagation. Each prototype vector represents a class or step in the activity. To obtain the predicted cluster assignments for each frame, we compute the similarity between the embedded features and the prototype vectors and pass them through a softmax function. This gives us the likelihood for each frame belonging to a particular cluster. Meanwhile, the embedded features and the learned prototypes are also fed to the temporal optimal transport module. Since there is no explicit supervision for training the network to learn cluster assignments, we propose temporal optimal transport to obtain pseudo-label cluster assignments referred to here as Q. Specifically, we enforce two constraints on Q. First, each cluster is assigned an equal number of frames, and second, the temporal ordering of the clusters is preserved. This is an instance of the classic optimal transport problem with vector dissimilarity between prototypes and features as the cost matrix. Temporal optimal transport allows us to learn diverse cluster assignments and at the end, the same time, ensure temporal ordering among clusters. Finally, we minimize the difference between predicted assignments and pseudo-label assignments by employing the cross entropy loss. As training iterations go by, each prototype starts better capturing a corresponding step in the video. This improves the computed pseudo-label cluster assignments, which in turn improves the prototype vectors themselves. Thus, at convergence, each prototype vector becomes a cluster centroid for each step of the activity, respectively. We achieve significant gains in performance over previous state-of-the-art approaches 
while being three orders of magnitude more memory efficient. Here we demonstrate our approach on a complex manufacturing assembly dataset with 30 steps. At the bottom left, we show the segmentation generated by our approach, where each color represents a distinct step in the activity. The red arrow represents the temporal position of the current frame in the segmentation. We also show the name of the step as it corresponds to the ground truth segmentation labels. Note that we do not utilize these ground truth labels in our approach and visualize these labels just to facilitate understanding. On the right, we show the boundary frames extracted by our approach. Each of these frames corresponds to the start of a new step in the activity. Notice how there are very subtle visual differences between steps, yet our approach is able to segment out several key steps such as attaching the glass on the keyboard window, attaching the thermal pad on the housing, and connecting and removing all connections from the keyboard. We also show our unsupervised activity segmentation results on a complex multi-step medical activity dataset. Again, notice how several subtle steps pop out as individual clusters, including applying ultrasound gel, extracting blood, inserting syringe, and wiping gel. To illustrate the online clustering process of our approach, we show the TSNE visualizations of the embedding space as the training progresses. In this visualization, each point represents a frame of a video, and the color represents the cluster assignments of each frame. We start with the zeroth iteration of training and increase the number of iterations over time. In the beginning, all of the frames are randomly scattered in the embedding space. As the training progresses, the approach learns to disentangle the frames in time. Then, it starts representing all of the different steps in the activity as different clusters. At convergence, notice how the structure of the embedding space preserves the order of the clusters, i.e. frames of cluster 0 are followed by frames of cluster 1, and so on. Please refer to our full paper on ArcSci for details. Thanks for listening.